Hey everybody, how's it going? Daryl here, welcome to the channel. So today we're gonna to talk about engine lighting and engine DJ, because as a mobile DJ, there's the option of standalone DJ controllers, which are super convenient, eliminates the need for a laptop. But if you go with the engine DJ platform, you also get access to engine lighting, which is super cool, because it lets you run sound switch behind the scenes. So you can potentially just have one device to control all your music and your lighting, just for a more streamlined and efficient setup. So I'm gonna go through all the steps from everything from preparing it on your laptop to loading it onto your device and a demo of the playback. And so what I find really intriguing about this workflow is that I'm using the Denon DJ Prime Go Plus today, and that is completely battery operated. I could make it wireless with like the outboard Bluetooth, but I'm just plugging it in. Bluetooth sometimes has some latency. But all of these lights I have here today, from my both lighting IR4s, to my both lighting BPM beams, and my both lighting 360 pixel tubes are all battery operate it and have built-in wireless DMX. I could bring the setup potentially anywhere. Although I feel like all that efficiency is kind of lost here in my garage where it's not as needed. So without further ado, let's begin. All right, let's go over the gear a little bit. So I'm using the Denon DJ Prime Go Plus for my DJ controller. So this is a standalone controller. It could work with a laptop, but I'm just gonna use engine DJ as well as engine lighting. If you wanna use engine lighting with this, it has to be in standalone mode. You have to use sound switch or whatever DMX software you want on your laptop if you use this with your favorite DJ software like Virtual DJ or Serato. This can operate plugged in, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna run off its battery power. So I have it set to mono and I have one plug plugged out to my main speaker. We're just gonna use this JBL EN1 Pro right here. And to connect the sound switch, you have to have either the sound switch dongle or a control one. There is a USB port right here. And so that just plugs right in. While you can use the dongle, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the control one. I use this USB type B to C for my MacBook, but I need an A to B. So plug it into one, ensure that it's switched to USB one, and then plug this back here. I'm gonna use this Chinley transmitter. This is compatible with all of the daughter receivers as well as all of the Chinese lighting fixtures that have built-in wireless DMX switchers, all of them for this demo. This is just a battery pack, but you could just plug this in. Considering this is like an all battery powered setup, I'm trying to make a point. Okay, let's plug it into Universe One. Just have my Insta360 to help me shoot this video. But yeah, that's pretty cool. That's a pretty minimalist workspace. See, I am plugging in my headphones as well. So really for the rest of this, I'm really not gonna be messing around too much on my control one. One of the things I love about sound switch is the plug and play functionality. When you look at the Wolf Mix demo, like their official trailer, there's a guy who's pushing a crap load of buttons on an interface like this. And, and I think that is like their ideal use case. They wanna make it really easy for you to push a lot of buttons and make a lot of stuff happen. But as a DJ, I'm really not wanting to push a lot of buttons. I just kinda want it to be automated and just so we're mostly just gonna run auto loops, but for a couple of these songs, we'll do an auto script. We'll just auto script this one. We won't put too much thought into it. Yeah, it looks great. Let's save it. And we know which ones have a script because it has this symbol. So I took out the SD card, put it in my MacBook. So let's go ahead and export it. Let's include the lighting tracks. Let's export it to my SD card. It's taking a moment, that's okay. There we go. All right, I have the engine DJ software pulled up with my drive still inserted. So let's go ahead and put it in there. So I'm just gonna create stems for all these tracks. Rendering stems, five remaining. All right, it's taking its time, but it's rendering pretty nicely. Now I have to export it at the sync manager. All right, so I want it from this computer onto my drive. Export to drive, Port it. Let's take out the USB drive, plug it back in, turn it on. Okay, here's our source, and here are our tracks. This little symbol right here shows me that they have the stems. And I can see all the tracks that I pre-prepared stems for right here. And so I use this gear icon right here, and then click on the lighting symbol. And here I can choose my new project. So Pro, no smart lights. Click on that flash drive, if you click on the SD, yes, that's okay. Click on the SD card. Then there's the sound switch shortcut project. I select that, the default venue. And then, yeah, this looks familiar. Here's the auto loops. 
So this can be your own project. You don't have to get the sound switch shortcut, but the sound switch shortcut is just a little template I've made. Works with a variety of lights. I'll have a link with more details down in the description below. But this is what I'm gonna be using to run my lighting today. Engine lighting has a pretty cool interface and I really like this. I wish that they had a standalone engine lighting device that just did engine lighting and it was touchscreen like this. You have all these manual overrides. So for these overrides to make sense, I'm gonna do something really quick. So I'm gonna to go to static looks. So these are the static looks that we already pre-programmed into SoundSwitch. These are non-editable within engine lighting like they are within SoundSwitch. So you have to just have these already figured correctly. So let's do antique white. And there we go, all the lights are on. So in my particular case within the shortcut, I have all of these static scenes up here that are just like a solid color. And then if you want to override them, you have all of these colors as well. Looks like I forgot to turn this light on. So you have several position overrides. You have like movement overrides. So you can kind of see them moving a little bit. And I can adjust like the, the speed and the size can black everything out, you can strobe things, you can adjust the strobe rate, you can just turn on UV light, so it blackouts everything except the UV, and then the white, which everything is basically already white, so it doesn't really add much drama. And what's cool too is that all of this functionality is right over here on the control one, like that white button I was telling you about, these color overrides, the strobe, and then you can also control like the speed of it. And so while I like this touch screen and I like that like everything is so clearly labeled, I, I usually want this screen to be pertaining towards my music. I don't want to have to switch between the engine lighting page as well as the engine DJ page. So I think the best workflow is to have this control one. It has like a one-to-one -one mapping of all the functionality. You have it in front of you so you can control everything and you don't have to navigate to this. So there's your auto loops page so you can like choose which auto loop is playing. You can choose whether it repeats. And if you have scripted songs, like we have a couple of them in our demo today, you can override that with auto loops. Remember there's four banks, so you can potentially have up to 128 different auto loops. And then you can map different groups of lights to different intensities, you can control that. That's very important for stuff like wash effects where it's incredibly useful but potentially too bright in people's faces. So for me, I have all of my up lights on group one. I have my tubes on group two, my movers on group three, and my dedicated wash on group four. And you can adjust the positions while you're at the gig. That's potentially important if you want to like shine this on a doorway, a cake, or on the dance floor. And there's like various like advanced controls and you can adjust those and take a look. And you can verify that your DMX interface is connected. And I can see that my control one is on universe one and two. And if you do Philips Hue and Nanoleaf, those are smart lights. That makes like a separate Wi-Fi connection to your lights. And I haven't really messed with that too much. I'm not going to go too much into it, but just know that it's there. So that is what we are going to be doing today. We're just going to let the auto loops play by themselves and we're just going to focus on mixing the music. So without further ado, let's get started.
Let's go party! Well, that is my demo. I'm pretty pleased overall. While in theory, I like this workflow, I don't like having to prepare everything in advance on my laptop and then transfer it to my device. It feels kind of inflexible, opposed to a laptop where I can just like edit things and change things on the fly. But whatever the case, this was a lot of fun. Thank you for joining me. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. What are your thoughts on engine lighting or engine DJ? Let me know down in the comments below. And please smash like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.